Mills Claude Money from Swisscom. Um, and now I would like to ask Rod Tucker, Professor Rod Tucker of the University of Melbourne, another uh, Green Touch member, to talk about some more detailed ideas that are in the pipeline. Thank you. You've heard from the previous speakers about a, a broad uh, uh, top level view of what we're doing in Green Touch. What I'd like to do now is focus in on some of the details of a few of our projects so you can get some idea of some of the, the technical challenges we're facing and some of the, the ideas that we're coming up with. This is a list of the this is the list of some of the projects that G showed before. As as you heard, we have about twenty-five projects in Green Touch, and here's about ten of them. Uh, I would like to focus in on just uh, a few of these, the top two, uh, green mobile networks, the virtual home gateway, and the minimum energy access architectures and single chip line cards. And I'd like to say just a little bit in detail about those projects so you can get a flavour of the kinds of technical achievements that we're, we're working on. So this is the, the picture of the wireline access network that uh, G showed earlier. The, the, the box on the far left is basically a telephone exchange and the green lines represent optical fibre that goes from the telephone exchange to the home. This in essence is a, a, a passive optical network, fibre to the home network, uh, and there are various splitting stages along the, the way from the, between the telephone exchange on the left and the home on the right. Now we've put this slide up here because in the wireline access group we have a range of projects and this is a very nice example of how a range of different projects each in itself involving collaborations all come together for a big collaboration which focuses on the whole wireline access network in, in its entirety. And there are a number of examples of, of projects here. For example, Draco is working on fibre in the home, which will reduce energy consumption in the home network. Uh, Cambridge University and Dublin City University are working on uncooled tunable lasers, which is a particular technology which will help reduce the energy consumption in future uh, high capacity uh, access networks as the capacity of the networks increase. And uh, SEAT at the University of Melbourne and ETRI in Korea are working on new architecture for the wireline access network that will reduce the energy efficiency. Now I'd like to focus in on just two of these to, to give some further details. Um, one, of them, one of them has to do with sleep modes in the home uh, cons uh, network and one of them is uh, called the uh, virtual home gateway. Now this diagram up here shows a box in the home which is our little picture of the home modem, or sometimes called the customer premises equipment. And everyone who has a broadband in the home right now, whether it's fiber or ADSL or whatever, will have a little box in the home that's connected to the network, and that connects to the computer. And that box sits there day and night, consuming energy, and if you put your hand on it, often it's quite hot. Uh, maybe 10 or 20 watts of power are going to that uh, modem. Now, what Huawei is working on is methods to reduce the energy consum consumption by putting that modem to sleep at times when there's no data, especially in the night when you're in bed asleep, uh, you're not using the internet, but that thing sits there consuming energy all the time. And the idea is that the modem will sense that there's no data, it will go into a sleep mode, and then as soon as data appears, whether from your end or from, the, from the, elsewhere in the network, someone trying to talk to you, the modem will immediately wake up and uh, go into action uh, and just use energy when it's necessary. And there's potential for great improvements in energy consumption in that home modem through sleep modes. The second one I wanted to focus on is the virtual home gateway, which is quite a, a revolutionary idea. The concept here is that some homes might be able to dispense with the home modem altogether and have much simpler equipment in the home, and that this home modem becomes part of the software in the telephone exchange. So this little thought box suggests that this computer in the telephone exchange is thinking about being a, a modem. It's a virtual modem, which in fact will apply to many homes simultaneously. And by using efficient computer programs in the telephone exchange, we can set up the situation that provides all the functionality of the modems in the home, but back in the telephone exchange where it can be done in a very efficient way, incorporating the equivalent of sleep modes and also doing things just much more efficiently. And there's great potential for reducing the energy consumption, in the, again, in that home network by by putting the home gateway in the telephone exchange. So INRIA and Swisscom are working on this project. In the wireline access group, as in other parts of Green Touch, we're working on very careful and detailed roadmaps for future developments because key to achieving the goals of Green Touch, we are developing roadmaps which set the goals throughout our, our 
research time frame to make sure that we get the kinds of outcomes we're looking for. So this schematically shows what we're trying to do. This is the power consumption of a, a home network or a connection to a home through the passive optical network. And it shows that every year, in fact, it shows it every two year, years here, but we're doing it on a yearly basis. We've got a target for what that power will be, and it's being reduced through those innovations. And it's this, these roadmaps that help to drive the innovations in our research program. Now, for those of you who are interested in the details, we have posters up the back which describe these projects and a range of other projects as well. And on that uh, poster up the back, there is a, a bar chart like this which gives the actual d details of the numbers involved in that, that particular roadmap for the uh, wireline access group. And by the way, if you're on, watching this uh, on the web, uh, the posters that are in the back of this room will also be on the website, so you can check out the details on the web as well. And we are planning uh, right now, we're working through the process of putting in place roadmaps like this for every one of our working groups in Green Touch, and this is just one example. Another project I'd like to briefly mention is uh, called uh, Beyond Cellular Mobile. It's about separating the data network from the, uh, the signaling network in a mobile uh, situation. Now, in today's network, the signaling network and the data network are combined. The signaling network is what's used to keep track of all the mobile phones in the network, to manage the connection between those mobile phones and the base station, and to make sure that as a mobile phone moves from one cell to another, that there is a handover so that the operation is seamless and the user doesn't even know that they're changing antennas. The data network provides the actual data connection, the, 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 video, the link of, for audio or video or whatever the application is using. And in today's network, they're combined. The idea is that we'll be separating these into two separate networks. And that provides a, a big advantage, as I'll explain right now. The signaling network doesn't require much power to operate. And the signaling network can cover, the, to, can cover all mobile phones in the, in the network quite uh, in, a, in, a, in an easy way, not using too much energy. But the data network uh, consumes a lot more energy. So the concept here is the signaling network works away keeping track of all the phones in the network, and the data network focuses only on the parts of the network where data is required. And if there's no data, for example, in this part of the network or in this part of the network, th those areas of the network are shut down or put into a sort of kind of a sleep mode so that uh, they're not uh, using excess energy. And by separating the data network from the signaling network, can we end up with an overall outcome which is much more energy efficient th than today's network. Finally, I'd like to say a few words about uh, uh, a very ambitious program. This is one uh, we're working on which has to do with a single chip router line card. Now, if you go into a, into a telephone exchange or a, a telecom switching center, you'll see lots and lots of racks, a bit like this one over here, but probably much bigger. And these racks are full of things like this, which plug into it, and they're called line cards. And what line cards do is connect the optical fiber in the network to the computers and the other equipment in the uh, in the telephone exchange and the switching network. And these are very complicated pieces of equipment. They have many different uh, electronic circuits on them, different kinds of chips, and a lot of energy is required to make these things work, many hundreds of watts. And then when you multiply these by hundreds, you end up with many thousands of watts being consumed. What we're planning to do in Green Touch is to replace this kind of line card with a single chip hybrid electronic photonic chip which can provide the same kind of functionality as the line card, but in a much smaller footprint and much more e energy efficient. And again, you'll see the details of this on the uh, posters at the back of the room. This uh, hybrid chip will have this kind of functionality. It's a complicated diagram, I know, but what it shows is there's some silicon photonics, that's optical circuits in, in integrated circuit form, and also CMOS chips, which are very similar to the chips you have in a computer. And in fact, like a computer, these are multi-core chips and the big advantage of this kind of device is that with multi-core chips, you can scale the activity in the chip to the amount of work that you want to do. So if there is not much activity coming into the line card, the chip in this case, you can switch some of those cores off and reduce the amount of energy consumption. And as more data comes onto the network, you can switch more cores on and it can take care of the increasing data, uh, but in an energy efficient way. So I think that's the end of my time. Uh, again, if you have any interest in further looking in the details of these uh, projects and other projects, uh, you can look at the posters at the back of the room or on the website if you're looking on the web. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Rod Tucker.
for that uh, interesting look at some of the projects. Now, uh, I, I'm told that uh, Luis Neves is still uh, unavailable, which is sad, but we're not going to get a lineup. Okay. Um, but there is a but. If uh, on the web or here you're interested in the content, and he was going to talk about the broader environmental context um, behind the, the Green Touch uh, initiative um, from his perspective as a member of, of a leader of JC, um, then that material will be made available online and you can simply go to the Green Touch website and it will, will be there, I'm told. So all is not lost. All is not lost.